Louisiana is working hard to get at the level of Texas and Florida. This was an article from last month, back in May. Louisiana becomes the first state to require the Ten Commandments to be posted in classrooms. Louisiana will become the first state to require that public universities and K-12 schools display the Ten Commandments in every classroom after the Senate voted overwhelmingly to push for the new legislation on Thursday. And like I said, this was last month. Following a short debate, lawmakers voted 30 to 8 to approve House Bill 71. All no votes were Democrats, though a few Democrats voted in favor of the proposal. The purpose is not solely religious, Senator Jay Morris. Republican from West Monroe told the Senate, rather, it is the Ten Commandments, historical significance, which is simply one of many documents that display the history of of the country and the foundation of our legal system. Authored by Representative Dodie Horton, Republican from Houghton, HB 71 has been the center of controversy in recent months amid concerns the um, proposal violates the First Amendment, which prohibits the government from establishing a religion. Senator Royce um, Duplessis, Democrat from New Orleans who identified himself as a practicing Catholic, was the only lawmaker to speak in opposition of the legislation on Thursday. He said, I didn't have to learn the Ten Commandments in school. We went to Sunday school. You want your kids to learn about the Ten Commandments? Take them to church. Duh. He added that the bill could potentially open up the state to lawsuits. We're going to spend valuable state resources defending the law when we really need to be teaching our kids how to read and write. I don't think this is appropriate for us to mandate. Horton has previously defended her bill saying a um saying during a house debate last month that the ten commandments are a basis of all laws in louisiana and arguing that the legislation honors the country's religion religious origins i'm not concerned with an atheist i'm not concerned with a muslim she said when asked about teachers who might not subscribe to the ten commandments i'm concerned with our children looking and saying looking and seeing what god's law is The bill must be uh, next signed by the governor before it becomes a law. Its passage highlights the increasingly blurry divide between church and state that's become more common in several Republican-led states. At least one other state, Utah, is also considering legislation that would require schools to display the Ten Commandments in classrooms. Texas proposed a similar bill in 2023, but it failed to receive a vote by the House before a crucial deadline. Last year, Horton successfully shepherded a bill requiring classrooms display the U.S. motto, In God We Trust, while at least 17 states now require or allow the phrase to be used in school buildings, Louisiana was the first to require it in every room. These people want a theocracy, and we're seeing it at every step. They have a game plan that they are there. Executed. They're executing this game plan, and the people that keep on wanting to say Democrats and Republicans are the same, no, this is a theocracy. They simply want a rule based on their Bible, and they don't care. Like that woman says, she does not care if people are atheists, Muslim, any other practicing religion, or people that don't want religion at all. They don't care that they could go to church and get this stuff. No, they want to. They want to impact everybody's life, even if they don't share the same beliefs. Now, let's bring it back to Texas. Like I said, all of this is interconnected. All of these forced birther, crystal fascist states are pretty much doing the same thing. They want a theocracy. So this is out of Texas. Some Texas school officials are skeptical that a K-12 curriculum with Christian influences is the lifeline state leaders promise. Texas education officials and Republican lawmakers say proposed elementary school lessons that incorporate extensive biblical references will boost student achievement and save teachers time from developing their own curriculum. But some school, some Texas school district leaders, parents, and education advocates aren't convinced things are so clear cut. The Texas Education Agency last week released thousands of pages of instructional materials that make up a proposed elementary school curriculum that drew immediate criticism for infusing religion, particularly Christianity, into public schools. 
if the State Board of Education adopts the curriculum, school districts um, that use it could get an additional $60 per student in state funding. While the financial incentive would entice some district leaders to consider the state's lesson plans, some say they are already satisfied with the current curriculum, and superintendents said district employees will need time to weigh whether the content adds value for their students, especially if they include biblical references that raise questions about church and state separation. <sighs> the law is clear cut to us. You don't teach your students a particular religion, says Stan Surratt, superintendent of Lindale Independent School District, which sits in conservative Deep East, Texas. You can talk about different religions, but we don't teach Christianity to our students. The materials feature Christian references throughout the kindergarten through fifth grade lessons. References include the parable of the Good Samaritan in social studies unit and the teaching of do unto others as you would have them do unto you in a kindergarten unit about fairy tales and folk tales. The materials note that the golden rule is a core teaching of the Bible and it comes from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. School district leaders said they have not yet reviewed the material themselves, but that the biblical references could be cause for concern. Public schools are legally prohibited from promoting particular religious beliefs. In Texas, some public schools teach world religions to high school students, and some offer a Bible elective class in high schools. Elementary school students are not usually taught religion. Michael Lee of Booker Independent School District in Texas Panhand in the Texas Panhandle said his students already perform well under the current curriculum. Still, the possibility of an additional $60 per student is enticing for the small rural district that has a limited budget. We, we will certainly look at the curriculum, Lee said. We will look at any area to find a dollar. The new curriculum was, re was released amid a broader push by Texas Republicans who control state government to put more Christianity in public schools. During the T Texas GOP convention last month, delegates voted on a platform that calls on lawmakers and the SBOE to require instruction on the Bible, servant leadership, and Christian self-governance. Following last month's primary runoff, um, Governor Greg Abbott declared he has enough votes in the Texas House to pass a bill allowing parents to use so-called school vouchers which will let them use taxpayer money to subsidize private school um, tuition. Nationwide, most money from voucher programs have been directed to religious schools, according to a Washington Post examination. Such a measure has repeatedly failed in the House, where rural Republicans and Democrats have both voted against it. For Texas school district leaders, including those in the most conservative Christian parts of the state, calls for religious instruction are alarming. This is just one more area that is clouding the line between private schools and public schools, said Brandon, Brandon Dennard, superintendent of Red Lick Independent School District, a small East Texas district that, service, that serves about 500 students. I'm a conservative Christian man, but I'm, a public I'm in public education because I want to serve all kids. I could work for a private school, but I choose to work for a public school that is available to all people. Pilot program. Last year, lawmakers entered the legislative session with a historic $32.7 billion budget surplus. Public schools administrators were hopeful that some of that money would go towards increasing teacher salaries, raising the base allotment that schools receive per student, and overhauling the school state funding formula. Public school advocates achieved none of these gains. School funding got caught up in the political battle over school vouchers, Neither vouchers nor meaningful funding increased, increasing passed. What did pass, though, was House Bill 1605, which authorized the Education Commissioner create instructional materials and approve electronic K-12 curricula um, to, cover the, to cover the state's standards. Historically, the state has created curriculum standards or a list of information students are expected to know to pass their grade level. Districts are free to meet those standards using the materials how they see fit. House Bill 1605 does not mandate that districts use state-approved lesson plans, but it offers money to those that do. Districts that opt into using resources could require their teachers use this material. So you can finish reading the rest of this page and the rest of this page if you like, but basically you see how the GOP 
how they are really trying to creep into being a theocracy. Actually, they're not even trying to creep. They're just doing it. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Like, People with older parents or who are older right now, this is about to really hit some folks in the pocketbook. Um, this out of fortune says, as Americans live longer, many retirees struggle to care for elderly parents. It makes childcare look inexpensive. At a time when many have dreams of finally taking a long awaited trip or dominating the pickleball court, a growing number of retirees are instead spending much of their time and money on caring for others and risking their own financial security. An estimated 19% of unpaid family givers were 65 or older in 2020, up from 13% in 2004, according to reports by the National Alliance for Caregiving and AARP. By 2030, the Census Bureau expects the population of adults over 65 will surpass children, indicating the older share of caregivers will also continue to rise. This is one of the reasons why they are like sounding the alarm about women not having babies. But this should also mean that they should actually start caring about women and our concerns because this is this is going to keep happening. This is not stopping the share of baby boomers um, and these older folks is just growing, growing, growing in comparison to the amount of children coming along. Americans of all ages become caretakers, of course, and one in five adults currently provides uncompensated care to a loved one. But for retirees or those near retirement who are relying on a fixed basket of assets to pay for their own living expenses and less time to make up the money, the financial toll can be especially deleterious, experts say. Research from AARP finds caregivers spent conservatively more than $7,200 a year on average, 26% of their income on costs related to their new roles, and an average of 4.5 years in each adult caregiving role for a total of over $32,000. That survey was done in 2021. AARP says inflation has exacerbated those costs. Total typical expenses include medication, meals, and travel, but can also include a loved one's utilities or housing costs, which may rise further because of home modifications like ramps and handrails. Even for well-off retirees, those expenses can add up and keep increasing should the person they're caring for receive a severe medical diagnosis like dementia or cancer. Many caregivers often spend down their own assets and end up in debt. They're all unexpected costs. Uh, cost. When you're not prepared to be a caregiver, they're all unexpected costs, says Rita Chola, Senior Director of Caregiving with the AARP Public Policy Institute. When you're retired, you're basically living on a fixed income. If you have not factored in an additional 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 a year for your fixed income, that can have a big impact. The financial hits of caregiving are potentially larger for those just ahead of retirement. In the 50 to 65 year age range, says Julia Cohen Sebastian, co founder and CEO of care, a, um, sorry, caretaking platform Grace. For many people, that's when kids have left the house and they are able to get serious about saving for their own retirement, taking advantage of catch up contributions, and generally dialing back discretionary spending. Leaving the workforce early to care for a parent prevents saving additional money in these prime years, and it potentially lessens upcoming Social Security payments or forces some to take them early at reduced amounts. It could also preclude them from contributing to a health savings account for their own medical costs in retirement. It makes childcare look inexpensive by comparison. You trade off your time, your livelihood, you'll be doing something purposeful and it is fulfilling, but it can cost you. And there are the health implications. Those 65 and older are already more likely to be dealing with their own medical issues and caregivers tend to have worse physical outcomes than non-caregivers due to the added stress and deprioritizing their own needs. According to research from Courtney Harold Van Houten, a um, population health sciences professor at Duke University School of Medicine. It's all very intertwined, says Van Hootven. They have such bad health outcomes because they have such bad financial outcomes. You don't have leisure time. You don't have time to do what you want in your retirement 
or you leave the workforce early so you're not fully saved for your retirement. All of that lost income and physical health can be impossible to make up once the caregiving period comes to an end, sans van hooten. For women and minorities, the effects are even more pronounced. Part of our research has found that they leave the labor force and they don't re-enter. It's really hard. They can't find a way back into the workforce, even if they think it's temporary. Many retirees take on caretaking because their family lot lacks options. A home health care aid or nursing home um, room is just too expensive. Families are surprised to discover Medicare doesn't cover many of these expenses. The default long-term care insurance in the U.S. is kids and family. On an individual level, there isn't much one you can do to remedy these costs. Once you get older, there are fewer levers you can pull for your finances, says Anqui Chin, senior research economist at the Center for um, Retirement Research at Boston College. The work levers kind of disappear. Moving to a, lar- a lower cost of living area can get more difficult as you get older, especially difficult if you have disabilities. It really limits the number of options you have. Sebastian says to look for government programs that may be able to cover the cost or to local senior centers for help finding programs. While Trula suggests seeking out your community's um, area agency on aging, AARP is pushing for workplace policies to add flexibility for workers who are dedicated caregivers. What's going to be crazy is that when my generation have families that are moving into these age brackets and get older and older. We are already struggling so hard. We, we like many of us in this age demographic and younger, already know we can't afford housing. Um, we're struggling under the weight of college education loans. And we have tried to tell these people that the costs are way too high compared to the wages. And the older folks are like, just work harder. Give up the avocado toast. Stop drinking Starbucks. All of this crushing, um, the economy is crushing people and it's going to continue to crush people. And the government is seeing what is going on. They can they can foreshadow what's going on. And the fact that women are not having babies to compensate or bring in more workers to care for these people, it's going to be a cluster F of major proportions. And our country isn't ready for the silver tsunami that's coming. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.